Well, we've been waiting a long time for it to happen, and it's pretty much almost here. The Belmont Stakes at Saratoga, and it's beautiful to be in Saratoga. Got some horses behind us. It's good to be back in Saratoga. Of course, we'll be heading back down south after this weekend, but Belmont Stakes coming upon us this Saturday. It's a tremendous weekend of racing. Best way to play the races this weekend, any weekend, every day, is to play through Naira Bets. Head on over to Naira Bets. If you're not a member of Naira Bets, use the promo code BELMONT25, and we'll match up to $200 your initial deposit and we'll give you a free $25 bet on the Belmont Stakes. Well, the field is assembled, and Mystic Dan is trying to do something that not enough horses do these days, and that's compete in every Triple Crown race, and you have to give his connections a lot of credit. Listen, this race has been talked about ad finitum. Mystic Dan getting a tremendous ride from Brian Hernandez, but I think it's unfair to say he was a lucky winner of the, Bel of the Kentucky Derby. Um, he was the only horse relatively close to the pace that finished that well. In fact, won the race. Sierra Leone got a great trip and a great ride, and lugging in cost him a little bit here. But you know what? He had his chance to get to him. I think that there's an argument to be made some will say he ran the best race. I think maybe Forever Young did. I think the Mystic Dan is close, regardless. Sierra Leone is a very logical favorite in this race, and he's the horse to beat. There's going to be pace in here. There's certainly enough pace signed on. It's an unfortunate part of the game with Tyler Gaffleone, who has ridden Sierra Leone flawlessly. He's lost the mount to Flavian Pratt, but it's very hard to turn down a rider like Flavian Pratt. It's certainly not going to hurt him having Flavian aboard. Whether or not he continues his antics of lugging in remains to be seen. Whether or not it'll be a factor also remains to be seen. My problem with Sierra Leone is not that I don't think he's the worst to beat, because I do think he's the worst to beat. I don't think he's worth eight or nine to five in this race, and so I put him second in here because I just don't want to take the short price. I respect Mystic Dan. There's a part of me that would like to see Mystic Dan win to show people you can run in all three Triple Crown race, continue to run effectively. He ran well in the Preakness. He lost to a horse that caught a flyer, who we'll talk about shortly. But I do want to talk about resilience because I think he's a very interesting member of the Belmont Stakes field. He's the kind of horse that I like in races or coming out of the races he comes out of because I think he ran very well in the Kentucky Derby. He, like the winner, Mystic Dan, was close to the pace. But he also was wide every step of the way while Mystic Dan was saving ground. So, yeah, he lost by a bunch of lengths to him, but I'm not sure how much worse he really ran. And he's going to be a much better price. Resilience made that big move, and obviously they caught him the inside, and he tired late. I don't think it was distance. I think maybe some was experience, but I think mostly it was the wide trip and being close to the pace. So to me, resilience is the price horse that is most interesting in this race. As we head down to Maryland for the second leg of the Triple Crown, where, where I thought Mystic Dan ran a very credible race. He ran, got a good trip, the usual good trip he seems to get is he's an adaptable horse. But Seize the Gray was too good for them this day. Was it a wet track? I don't know. Maybe the wet track helped him in there. It's not likely we're going to have a wet track Saturday. Contrary to some people, there isn't really much rain around after Thursday's card. So we should be good to go. I just think he kind of caught a flyer, a flyer in this race. But he has improved for Wayne Lucas. And I've learned over many, many years of the racetrack to discount Wayne Lucas when his horses start running well is a mistake. Think of a horse like Will Take Charge, how he just kept getting better and better as a three-year-old. And Seas the Gray ran very well when he won the Pat Day Mile, and he ran extremely well to win the Preakness. I think he's going to take some pressure in here. Doorknock has speed, and I have to think Mind Frame's going to be forward as well. I think it's going to be a tougher race for him, but I don't discount his chances. I just prefer others. As far as Mystic Dan, oh, we'll go to Mind Frame before I get back to Mystic Dan. You guys are in a hurry over there in the truck. Mind Frame. Okay. If there's one horse this weekend that I'm going to be wrong about, if he or she is effective at a short price, it's Mind Frame. I absolutely do not like this horse's chances at all in this race. And I'm not suggesting he doesn't have talent because he obviously is a very talented horse. Having said that, I find the morning line crazy that he's three to one or seven to two and Mystic Dan's five to one. But I've learned, even though I don't learn as much as I should, to not argue with morning line maker David Aragona because he's usually right. And if he is this definitive about the difference in price, he is probably right. Mind frame has a lot of fans. I think he is absolutely the wrong horse for this race. You're telling me he's going to press an honest pace on the outside and have enough to hold off the closers after that cakewalk he had around the track? I don't really see it happening. I think it's going to be very contentious up front. I think he's facing much better horses. And frankly, while his first race at Gulfstream was very impressive, I didn't think his last race name to speak of. He set a very, very slow pace. And I just think he's in a world of trouble in his third start against a field like this. And at a short price, 
I think he creates value for everybody else. I'm gonna try to finish my Mystic Dan thought. By drawing post three in this race and having less speed than the horse inside of him, it'll enable Brian Hernandez to get to the inside. And that's where Mystic Dan is most comfortable and that will give him his best chance to run his best race. Let's go to another horse, Honor Marie. I think there's two horses in this Belmont Stakes that if you like them in the Kentucky Derby, whatever anybody else thought of them, you're supposed to play them back in the Belmont Stakes. One of them is Doorknock, who had absolutely no chance with a ridiculous trip. I'm not his biggest fan, but if you liked him in the Derby, bet him back. The other one is this horse, Honor Marie, who will take a look at finishing second in the Louisiana Derby. And I think there's an argument that he ran every bit as well as Catching Freedom, who ran a respectable race finishing fourth in the Derby and a very respectable race finishing third in the Preakness. And Honor Marie just had absolutely no shot in the Kentucky Derby. He was totally bounced around, eliminated at the start, and completely taken out of the race. From there, he got in trouble sort of any time he liked to move. I have no idea if he would have been effective or not, but I know he never had a fair chance to run the Derby. So once again, and I had picked him second, if you like him, liked him in the Derby, I think you're supposed to give him another chance in this race, and I'm certainly going to be using him. I'm not a fan of Doorknock. He just hasn't shown me as a three-year-old he's good enough. But if you liked him in the Derby, he had an absolutely impossible trip and does at least deserve another chance. Let's look at the Peter Pan. The Peter Pan is a race that's been very productive over the years for Belmont Stakes horses. We saw it last year. Of course, will we see it again this year? I don't know. I thought the horses in the race ran well. We can take a look at that video. And Antiquarian's a nice horse and he's improving. I love the story. I always like the Centennial horses. Um, he's his sire preservationist ran for Centennial, so it's a cool story. And listen, he's got the right trainer to get him to keep improving, but he's gonna have to get faster to win this race. I do think he's the one you want out of this race. He ran better than Protective the Maiden, and Protective is maybe the best maiden running now. I just don't see him as being good enough. And I am a fan of the wine steward. I am absolutely shocked that he chose the Belmont Stakes. I'm glad they're taking a shot, but I thought he'd be in the Woody Stevens or the Mike Lee against New York Reds because I think he's a horse that wants less distance, not more distance. As far as Antiquarian, if anybody is successful out of this race, I believe it will be him. I just happen to prefer other horses, but I do think Antiquarian is worse on the improve that whether or not we hear from the Belmont Stakes, there's a good chance we'll hear from him further down the road. My pick in this race, Resilience. He's my top pick, the number two. The number nine horse, Sierra Leone, no problem, no argument. He is the horse to beat. Don't want to take him on top at a short price. Honor Marie is my third choice. I'll be using him. And Mystic Dan, in a lot of ways, sentimentally, I'm rooting for him to do well as he comes and runs in all of these races and always shows up. And if he's five to one, frankly, I think he's value in this race. I think they all may be value if Mind Frame ends up seven to two or three to one. We'll see what happens to the Belmont Stakes. Best way to play it? You know the drill. Head over to NairaBets.com. Use the promo code BELMONT25. We'll not only match $200 of your initial deposit, but we'll also give you a free $25 bet in the first Belmont Stakes ever to be run in Saratoga.